Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, back for the football season, and this is going to be some key takeaway from the Eagles' Week 1 victory. Numero uno is everything that could have went well for this game for the Eagles did go well, particularly the only thing that was a concern in the first half was defense on third downs. That got better in the second half, and they just started to shut down the Falcons in the second half when the thing that is good about that bad Falcons team supposedly, is supposed to be their offense. They still got Ridley. Of course, they lost Julio, but they still got some cats down there. They could do nothing against the Eagles' defense this week. So that's numero uno. Number two is the Alabama connection, the former Alabama connection of Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith continued to be very successful. Smith had six receptions for 71 yards and a touchdown on 11.8 yards per average. And then Jalen Hurts, of course, had 264 yards and three TDs and only one sack on the game, so avoided the pressure. Well, the O-line honestly played very well yesterday. We'll get to that soon. And then, so that's how Hurts did. Plus, to go with that, he had, I believe it was 62. Yes, 62 rushing yards on six carries. So he played very well, and that connection stayed together. And then the next key is the receivers in general, including Goddard, into that. You had a good performance from Jalen Rager, six receptions, was targeted six times, caught all six, 49 yards, and a touchdown. Goddard had 42 yards. Watkins was good early in the game. You were able to go to him for some screens, and he was able to make some nice plays. And then Zach Ertz still had 34 yards on two receptions as well. And then Miles Sanders had 39 yards receiving, which is the next key. Miles Sanders kept balling out as well because on top of those yards receiving, he had 15 rushes for 74 yards. And then Kenneth Gainwell, if we're going to quote the rushing game and say how successful the rushing game is, needs to be grouped into that as well because he had 37 yards rushing, but also picked up the blitzes really well, particularly in that two-minute drill at the end of the first half. He played very well picking up the blitzes. He was in there a lot for that moment. And it seems like that's because the Eagles love their fifth-round pick, being able to pick it up and also be a good guy in the passing game. So mixing him in with Miles Sanders and Boston Scott when he's back, seems like that will move pretty well and pretty successfully. And then the last key <clears throat> is the one thing the Eagles have to fix is the penalties. You Obviously, there was too many penalties in this game. Playing a better team, you're playing San Francisco next week. You're going to need to limit those. You're not going to be able to have penalties like that. But I lied. That was actually the second to last key because I forgot to bring up the offensive line. The offensive line was very successful in this game. Having everybody back healthy, having Jordan Mulata, he'll get over having some of those penalties. He's going to bully people out there. Having Lane Johnson back healthy throughout the season, having Kelsey, having Brooks, having those boys all together, that really makes a difference, and we saw that in game one. But the big thing going into next week as the final thing for this video as we wrapped up the keys is you're not going to be able to have those same types of penalties. And we have to remember, this is a Falcons team, but everything went well. Jalen Hurts played as well as you wanted to. He was more accurate. He was playing very well while rushing the football, picking the right times to run and the right times to throw. That one touchdown to Goddard was like almost a Vic play where you run it out and then just snipe it to somebody. Um, and then also Watkins on the screens. It's nice to see them have the chemistry they always talked about. And then the Devonta Smith and Hurts connection stayed together. So we're going to need that to happen in the next week. And then limit the penalties in order to beat a better San Francisco 49ers team. The Falcons are one of the lower tier teams in the league. The Eagles were, though, the underdogs by three points. So this is still a very nice win in week one, especially on the road. Now you're coming home to play San Francisco, and it's going to be very nice to be able to see what the Eagles are able to do against that better opponent here at home, coming off of great momentum because everybody was picking the Falcons. Nobody expected the Eagles to smack them 32-6. to So what are the Eagles going to be able to do coming off of great momentum this week against San Francisco? This has been a quick reaction, the quick key factors to week one of the Eagles beating the Falcons, smacking them 32-6. to I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you do, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe. And as always, fly, Eagles fly on the road to victory against those San Francisco 49ers next week. Peace out, everybody.